There's been a lot of ridiculous walking animations in Scarlet and Violet so far, but I think I may have just found the wackiest of them all. Introducing Toad Scroll and his patented bounce. Yeah, I think this is my new favorite. Welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Last episode, we took down the final boss of Team Star, Eddie, the fighting type master. And today, we're going to be heading up this mountain, which will lead us to the final gym. Because that's right, guys, we have now completed almost every single thing this game's got to offer. 17 out of 18. And the final challenge remaining is all the way in the bottom left corner. We've got the Alfornada Gym and the leader Tulip, aka the Bewitching Beautician. This psychic user is a real force even among gym leaders. She runs a cosmetics brand, which she also models for, and she aims to be the very best in everything she does, including battle. And now that I've read this little description, I just remembered that we actually saw her a long time ago in the electric gym city. She was like all over the billboards. And she's looking a little... Well, I will save the comments. If you guys are excited for our final gym challenge, don't forget to smash that like button as we're going to begin our climb up the very, very tall mountain. Now, there's actually a couple of ways that you can get to this final town. But since we've got all of the Koraidon upgrades, I figure we take the least conventional way or I guess the most unique. And that's literally to climb the mountain itself. Which reminds me, there's actually a tower over here that we never explored before. So we might as well go check that out real quick. Maybe we can get a bit of a better vantage point and sort of head start from up there. Oh, it seems there's actually a league representative at the base of this tower too. Hello there. So far you defeated one trainer. Okay, gotta be five, which is not too bad. I've actually got a quite unique team for today's episode because we're going to be facing a psychic gym. I brought along two dark types in Nobunaga and Kiddo. Vegeta, who's ghost type, of course, that's super effective. And Dubloon, also ghost. Luma and Quixote are just a little bit lower level than the rest of the main squad. So I decided to keep them along just to sort of catch up. I know last episode I was a bit conflicted on what we should take on next considering we now have two of the main three stories kind of complete or rather we can complete them at any point. But most people in the comments talked about the fact that this psychic gym is in the mid level 40s and so I've decided that's what we should take on because one, I'm not sure if my Pokemon are really up to the level we should be at to take on the final boss of Team Star or whatever the ending of Arvin's quest might be. And two, because I don't want to end up being overleveled compared to the Psychic Gym Leader, who, like I mentioned, is in the mid to high level 40s. Bro, are there seriously no more trainers around here? Like, what the frick? Could have sworn there's got to be some, like, for the challenge, right? Oh my god. Aha! Finally, I spot a trainer. Jeez, scrub a dub dub, slip slide into your. Just not gonna finish that sentence. Seriously? You're at level 20, man. I guess we were supposed to explore this area a lot earlier, but how the heck was I supposed to know? Like, I figured you needed Rock Climb or the climbing ability on Koraidon to even get over here, but apparently not. Bro, I've been running around this field for the last, like, 20 minutes already and haven't found a single trainer. What the heck? I mean, I guess we at least get a TM, so whatever. I'm just gonna start climbing up this mountain. We'll see if we end up finding any trainers. If not, then... I don't care. We're going for it. All the way up. I'm all the way up. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Oh, we got a TM for Bug Buzz over here. I can't even begin to explain where the heck I am. I guess I ended up at the top of this waterfall and still haven't found any freaking trainers. Like, I don't know if I'm just on the wrong path or they're really well hidden, but this area is a little bit confusing and definitely not that easy to explore unless you have all of the Koraidon upgrades, which makes me wonder why the trainers that we did find are so low level. Like, were we actually supposed to explore this earlier when we went to Cortondo? Then again, that was like the very first gym. So feels a little too early to be. Aha, finally found one of yous. And apparently she thinks it's a dead end. Yeah, everything around here seems to be a dead end. Like I am 
very, very lost. Still at level 20 for this trainer. Okay, well, I'm gonna just super cut all of these because the trainers are clearly a little bit low level compared to our own. So, uh, one more to go? Oh man, I'm getting kind of emotional. Like, we're really almost at the end of the story. And I read a couple of comments talking about how they don't want the series to end. I kind of feel the same. Like, we've had so much fun with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet so far. I don't want it to end, but believe me, there's still plenty of content to go through, not just in the main story, but I also have a lot of ideas for extra stuff that we can do after I finish the main playthrough. So if you love Scarlet and Violet, stay tuned. There's plenty more to come, not just from my channel, but the game itself. Like, I'm pretty sure we're going to get DLC eventually, which I'll talk about a little bit more throughout this video. But, oh my god, finally, I want to see, yeah, I want to see you have another level 20 that I can just be in one. Wait, is that Komala actually her Pokemon? Oh, that'd be so funny, but no, it definitely isn't. Ooh, I found some ruins, and actually this is where the strongest trainer of the area resides. My very own secret base. Bro, don't remind me about secret bases. Oh man, I so wish that feature was still in Pokemon. Like, I love making my secret base, especially in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire where they added so many more options, and yo, he's actually got the ghost type Oricorio. I forgot what the style, like the dancing name is, but probably my favorite kind of Oricorio in terms of design. Well, we did get at least one level for Kiddo at the end of all that. <laughs> Maybe the training was worth it. I also noticed there is another TM up here, and it is going to be Trick Room. What? We actually didn't have Trick Room yet, and I think that's it or at least this ruin. But as always, there's even more items if we keep exploring, like, bro, as much fun as exploring is, I feel like after a while, I definitely get tired, like, of just running around, and especially when there's no trainers nearby. Like this area, there's barely been any. What the heck is that? Yo, what Pokemon are you? Oh my god, I thought it was like a Chikorita for a second because of the leaf, but uh, no, obviously Chikorita is not in this game. We got a Leafeon instead with the Terra Grass type. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all the evolutions in this game turn into like the type they actually normally are. Well, we didn't actually have a Leafeon yet, so might as well catch it. If it stays in the ball, that is. Oh, wait, never mind. We got a critical capture <laughs> once again. I swear I've been getting so lucky with the critical capture in this game. Like, compared to all my other playthroughs, I feel like, for some reason, Scarlet and Violet is just gifting them. As it looks like we're only missing Flareon and Espeon now. But that is enough exploring now, for real. Who am I kidding? I can't help but want to grab every single item out there. Like, I don't know if I'm the only one. I can't be the only one, right? Like, I don't know if it's my minor OCD, but... As long as I know that there's still items out there to get, I can't move on from an area until I've collected, at least in my mind, what I think is all of them. Eventually, we must move on, and now we've defeated six trainers. Look at that, overachiever. Wait, what the frick? Didn't we have a Rocky Helmet already? I could have sworn I had the Rocky Helmet before, but it said me right there. Maybe I'm thinking of a different item, or maybe a different file? I don't really know. But, okay, we got the Rocky Helmet now. But now that we've completed that side quest, and now that it's almost become nighttime, let's actually begin climbing up this very tall mountain. Or not, because I guess this little fampy had other plans. I suppose our climb begins here. <laughs> I can't get over this animation, bro. It totally reminds me of Crazy Frog, which I learned the hard way. Apparently, we can't play a clip of that in videos, or you'll get copyrighted. Because I tried using it in, like, uh... I think it was the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet glitches video. I used a little snippet and still got dinged for it. Anyway, let's actually start climbing up and I'll talk about the topic I wanted to bring up earlier and that is DLC in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Do you guys think it'll happen? Or do you think maybe they'll take a different approach like Pokemon Ultra Scarlet and Violet or maybe even a sequel? We haven't had a Pokemon third version in a long time, like Emerald, Platinum, Crystal even. It used to kind of be the standard, but in recent generations, they've definitely strayed away from it. Instead of going for DLC or just skipping the third version altogether, still wishing we got that Pokemon Z. 
I really do think that they could do another Pokemon Ultra version, like Ultra Sun and Moon. It would definitely fit Scarlet and Violet in my opinion, because they can add things like level scaling, which I started talking about last episode. Oh hey, we're already at the top, what the heck? I didn't even realize, I thought it was going to be way higher of a climb, or longer I guess, but I'm not done talking, okay? So before we head down into the town, let's actually grab a couple more of the items around. We got a shiny stone. I'm pretty sure there's got to be something else around this base of the lake. Oh, yep, of course. We got a TM for Giga Impact. Bro, look at the view from up here. Oh my god, we got Mezagoza, the Pokemon League, Glaciato, which just looks absolutely tiny from up here. That's crazy. There's also that peak up there. I don't think we ever climbed all the way to the top. Pretty sure that's where we got uh, Bombardier, or fought the Titan Bombardier. Oh my god, please no. Okay, I thought I was going to fall all the way down. That would have sucked. But I guess I wanted to ask you guys for the common question of the day. Which of the Pokemon quote-unquote sequels do you prefer? The Ultra kind of definitive version, like Ultra Sun and Moon, or maybe the direct sequel, like Pokemon Black and White 2. I know a lot of people... Those are like their favorite Pokemon game of them all. Or do you think they should go back to the tried and true third version? Like Pokemon Platinum or Emerald? Or maybe you really do just prefer DLC. Like we had in Sword and Shield. Which definitely feels like the most likely just because of recency. Like we just had DLC in Sword and Shield. And also video games in general. DLC has become a way more common thing. So it feels like... That's the way that things are trending, but maybe you feel differently. So let me know in the comments below. Now it seems we actually have the boss trainer for this area here, and considering we're actually getting closer to the Psychic Town, I feel like he's definitely got Pokemon that are more up to our level, so it looks like we're gonna get our training in after all. Now this guy's last Pokemon is gonna be a Luxray, and we actually just one-shot it with the Terrastalize Shadow Ball. Love to see it. Maybe a sign of things to come. Ooh, Kiddo is actually going to be learning first impression off of that. Yes, definitely want to grab that attack. It only works on the first turn of the battle, but I mean, Psychic types are weak to both Bug and Dark, so we can definitely first impression and then go for Throat Shop after if we don't switch out or whatever. What the heck? Why did the camera angle change? Okay, <laughs> just got a little extra special nod from this guy. Watch out for dangerous Pokemon and people, okay? Yep, stranger danger. Thank you for the reminder, my guy. I haven't heard that since I was like, I don't even know, honestly. <laughs> kind of feel like my parents never really taught me that growing up, which is probably not a good thing. Like, I guess culture is a little bit different in Puerto Rico though. Like growing up, you kind of know the neighbors at least around you, so we would always be out in the neighborhood playing with uh, other kids, going over to their houses and playing games and stuff. Which I feel like it's kind of a dying thing nowadays. I don't really hear about kids really going over to their friends' places unless it's like predetermined. I mean, I know it's for safety and stuff. I'm not a parent myself, so I can't really judge whatever the heck you do to keep your kids safe. Considering uh, a lot of stuff going on with society recently, I don't think I would necessarily feel all that safe having kids anyway. But I will say I definitely appreciate the fact that I did get to have that in my childhood and get to play with like all the neighborhood kids and stuff. Anyway, it is finally time to head into the city and I wanted to see if we can maybe make it to the roof of the gym. Oh, I think we actually can. Yo, we made it to another rooftop. Let's go. Actually, on this rooftop over here, we've got the arena, it seems. We're actually going to be fighting the gym leader. And the music here, okay. Got a little bit of a Prince of Persia desert vibe going on. I like that. Even though we're not really in the desert city, like, I feel this might have fit more for Cascarapa, the water area. I mean, this whole city kind of feels like it would fit better in the desert anyway. Or maybe where Zapapico was, which is also kind of the desert quarry place. Oh no, the city feels a little bit out of place. Oh my gosh, yo! The mosaics with the Gen 1 sprites? That's so cool, are you serious? Bro, okay. I know that I've been like kind of debating throughout the whole playthrough what my favorite city is. This definitely put Alfornoca or whatever this place is called on the map. That is so awesome. 
The Gen 1 Sprite throwback? You know the old school fans are gonna love that. And it looks like we all we have a couple of fancy restaurants around here too. Well, I guess just one fancy restaurant. The rest seem pretty normal. But I want to do a little bit of exploring actually, because yeah, this city is just so sick. I love the design of it, like the tiles on the floor, the old school looking furnaces. See, poetry, or no, pottery. Yeah, definitely pottery, not poetry, considering I was just talking about the giant stone furnace or kiln or whatever the heck they're called. And I figured that, uh, yep, we do have another TM hidden behind these houses. Oh, they're decorated with like those plates. I don't remember where I heard about that before, but I think it's another common thing in Spain. Once again, I'm gonna have to rely on my two favorite commenters that always provide the history of the Paldea region, or I guess geography, not history. Well, I am curious what the official way to get into this town would have been, so let's go check it out as we have another trainer right here actually, and one of the caves I was talking about. I built up these muscles by many trips to the gym. Wait, the Pokemon gym? Or the gym gym? That always confuses me, because there are a lot of bodybuilders in the world of Pokemon, but... Then there's also Pokemon gyms, or they're just regular gym gyms? Oh hey! This guy's actually got a rev up room, which we somehow haven't fought yet. Well, not in its regular form at least, we fought a lot of these on the Star Mobiles that Team Star use, but... I could've sworn you're steel and poison, huh? Guess I forgot, poison actually resists fighting type then. I think the poison boss did have the regular rev up room on his team too. But we haven't seen one in the wild yet, which is a little bit strange. I could have sworn we would have seen a rev up room by now. As we head inside Alfornada Cavern, it's kind of weird that we're exploring this totally backwards. Oh wait, there's another boss trainer here, huh? Well, this is a different area. We saw like the text popped up saying Alfornada Cavern. So I don't think the trainers in here would count as far as the Pokemon League challenge for the city but it's probably still worth exploring, like, this cave looks massive, my god. Even got a special Terra Pokemon, Houndoom! No, not trying to fight you today, my dude. To be honest, I'm kind of over catching Pokemon because the next reward that we get from Professor Jock isn't until we have 400 registered in the decks, and considering we just hit 200, yeah, that's gonna take a minute. In fact, I think that's literally the whole dex, because I'm pretty sure there's 400 Pokemon in total here in... What the heck? There's an outbreak of Glimmits? Okay, <laughs> didn't expect to run into this. I haven't had the most luck with uh, shiny hunting in outbreaks, but maybe that turns around today. As we could use still a little bit more training, so let's uh, knock them all out. For a second I thought there was only those two, but no, there's definitely more Glimmits down this way. I don't think I'm gonna do the whole picnic reset method, but we'll just knock out all the glimmits in this outbreak, and if we happen to get a shiny, if we happen to get lucky, then I'll be very happy. Oh my god, there's so many more that just appeared! All the way up there too? Bro, the problem is I have no idea what shiny glimmit would even look like, so if we did happen to spot one from far away, I mean, I guess we'd have to go up real close and just hope that it actually looks different from the regular glimmit. Though I suppose if we did actually run into a shiny, our Golden Go would refuse to knock it out. So that's one strategy for making sure it's not the shiny. Just try to auto battle it. And if your Pokemon refuses, then yeah, that means it's definitely the shiny. Moments later. All right, I'm over it, honestly. I must have fought over a hundred of these little glimmits and no shiny. So I give up. I'll shiny hunt more like after the main playthrough, but I suppose this would have been the regular way to get into Alfornoda, or whatever the heck the town is actually called. And it seems this leads back over to where the windmills were, and the Titan Bomber Gear, which I still never found by the way. I'm pretty sure I just accidentally killed a Titan, and now there's no way I'm ever getting it. I like how the game even warns you that you're not going to make it to the city if you try to go on foot, because you definitely need some kind of ride Pokemon. Well, obviously, Goraidon or Miraidon, but more specifically, you're gonna need some upgrades if you wanna make it, because with the regular jump, I mean, well, now that we have the climb, I can't really show it off, but I wonder if maybe you could, like, backwards jump your way up here? Yeah, again, I have the upgrade, so it's kinda hard to show it off, but 
I'm curious now. I kind of want to test and see if, like, maybe you could have... What's the word? Sequence breaked your way through this cave and make it to the Alphornoda gym. I would have to imagine that some people accidentally came here after the bug gym and quickly realized they're not supposed to be in this area yet. I am curious now though if maybe trainers in here do count as part of the area nearby. I guess we'll test it out with this weather gal. The levels are definitely way higher than they were back outside and oh my god. Our first impression just did nothing, okay? No, this isn't fair, man. You got a two-on-one. We got Lycanroc and Pupitar ganging up on us? What the heck? Obviously, that Pupitar is not actually part of her squad, but still, it's so funny when other Pokemon just decide to gang up or just show up to cheer on their homies. All right, we're out of here. Is it actually daytime yet? Looks like it is. Oh, okay. Now tell me, sir, do I have enough trainers? Three out of seven, huh? I think the girl in the cave did count then, because otherwise I've only beat him and then the hiker all the way up there. So maybe I got to fight more people in that cave then. Oh my god, there's a Sylveon right here. What the heck? I noticed on the map there seems to be another way we could have gone into the city and it's this path right here. Not exactly sure what's up with it, but it looks interesting, so I decided we should explore it. Oh my god, yo! The geography here looks crazy though, what the heck? Just like the Strait of Gibraltar or something? No, that wouldn't make sense at all. I think that's in the south of Spain and it connects with like the Middle East or some other country. I don't freaking know, but hey, there's actually more trainers down here. Maybe you guys count for this whole challenge thing too. I sure hope so. I didn't see the text pop up on screen saying this was like a different area of the province. So I'm going to say that it probably does still count as the same place as the city. So if we can find any more trainers around, that would be great. Well, look at that. We got a karate man. I lost at the gym, so I'm doing some more training. Oh, dude, I don't think any training is going to help you if you. Oh, my God. Why am I all the way back there? Yo. Dude just did a 180 and turned around, okay. That's interesting. Also interesting is Pessimian, which I think someone in the comments mentioned is supposed to be just a football player, not necessarily rugby, since the Lola region is Hawaii and technically that's part of the US, but whatever. Rugby, football, soccer. Honestly, what's the difference? Am I right, gamers? Yet another defeat for Hakobo. If you had another yawn for me, oh my god, that was a big one. I don't really feel tired, so it must be hunger? Even though I just ate. In fact, I actually got myself some IHOP today. You gotta treat yourself every once in a while, and apparently this leads to another cave? Where the heck does it exit then? Oh wait, it said Alfornada Cave though, which is the same cave that we were fighting the Glimmits in earlier, so I'm a little bit confused. Uh, there's definitely more items that we haven't gotten yet though, so I don't think it's the same cave, but maybe it connects. And there's also another trainer, so hopefully you count too. I like your hair, dude. What the heck? That's definitely the closest to my hairstyle in real life. Like, why can't we pick that for our own character in the game? At least I've never seen it in any of the barber shops around the map. Then again, it's not like you can go bald, and there's a lot of bald trainers in this region, so yeah. Just because one of the NPCs has it doesn't quite mean your own character can use it. Alright, that's another trainer down. I haven't really been keeping count, but I think we should be around 5 or 6, so either 1 or 2 more to go. Where the heck is the exit of this cave, though? Sure are a lot of Toxtricities, and a Salazzle as well. Man, those Salazzles always confuse me, because the way that they like kind of glimmer in the cave makes them look like they're shiny. If you don't know, shiny Salazzle is white, and yeah, I don't know why. Something about the lighting in these games like makes it look like those Salandits are shiny. Not Salazzle, actually. I think I said Salandit uh, is what I meant to say. Oh, wait, this literally ended up leading back to the... What? Oh my god, we're like at the main part of the cave. What the frick? So I guess there is a way you can get all the way through this cave even when you're in the early game, but obviously you'd end up fighting Pokemon way too high level for ya. So 
really curious if any of you guys accidentally came up this way early in the game. What was your experience like when you realized you were up against level 50s? Anyway, there's one last trainer down here that I didn't actually fight, so let's get it. That should be number 7 as we head out of the cave, and it is now very, very much daytime, which I like. Fighting the bosses during the day is definitely nice. Eight trainers, dang, look at us, overachiever once again. We're gonna get the TM for Flare Blitz, okay. I'm not really sure that any of my teammates can learn that right now, but one thing I do know is that is definitely enough training, so let's head on to the gym now. Well, let me check, you never know. Of course, uh, we can teach close combat to Primate or Annihilate, but that wouldn't really help. Bug Buzz wouldn't either. I mean, I'm pretty sure we're fine with the TMs that we have. Since this is going to be a Psychic Gym, Bug, Dark, and Ghost types will be super effective. If you have any of those, definitely recommend. We have quite a few of them, so without further ado, let's head into our final gym test. Oh, don't tell me. Orange! Another rival battle, really? It's finally time for your last gym, right? I heard from Rika. But I'm 0% worried about you. I know you got this. Even La Primera seems like she wants to keep an eye on you. Maybe I'll go find her so we can cheer you on together when you battle the gym leader. So go have a battle that's fruitful for you and the crowd. Okay, thank goodness. We literally just had a rival battle, like, in the last gym, so it felt a little bit too soon for another. Welcome to the Alfornada Gym! Let me register you. I'm pretty sure I should be registered at this point, like... It's our 8th gym, lady! Now in order to face Gym Leader Tulip, you'll first need to pass the test. Here at the Alfornada Gym, that means working up a sweat with a... Excuse me? You know I'm a gamer, right lady? We don't do exercise. I'm talking about the emotional spectrum practice created by Tulip herself, of course. Oh, ESP. I get it. Complete it and you pass the test. The woman wearing the black tracksuit in the practice area will explain the rules. Just turn left after leaving the gym and you'll find the practice area right next door. Now get out there and have fun! Okay. Definitely not what I was expecting, though I guess it was kind of foreshadowed. That guy mentioned how he's been working out at the gym and I was like, do you mean the Pokemon gym or the gym gym? Yo, wait, what? Gym teacher is here? Us. Welcome, new kid! This is where we do emotional spectrum practice! It's been a while, Dendra. Sorry, I haven't been to class. I promise at some point I'm gonna make it up, okay? We got summer school. Or something. Why is your battle studies teacher here at the Pokemon Gym? You're wondering. Well, I've been friends with the leader here, Tulip, since we were kids! Oh yeah? Is that how you got that scar on your head? We decided to have a Pokemon battle with a special rule. The loser has to do what the winner says. So we battled and... What happened? Come on, spill the beans. Look, never mind. Point is, this is a chance to both get a workout in and help my friend when I don't have classes. The rules of emotional spectrum practice, or ESP for short, are simple. I'll show you a certain movement and all you gotta do is, oh my god, what is going on with your hair? Okay, oh, nope, wait. Ready to get this gym test started? Yes, mind and body are ready. Though I wonder exactly what it's gonna entail, cause... I... Okay, we got some Zumba music going on. Wait, is this actually the rhythm minigame? No way. Take on the emotional spectrum practice. Okay, we know that part. Why is it lagging so much though? Oh my god. Okay, that's like... Uh... Well... Three... Two... One... <laughs> That's actually the game lagging, by the way, not me. Oh my god, wait, what? No, I pushed the wrong one! Uh, green! Yes, okay, so it's color-coded. Do I have to do it again? Wait, do I just keep spamming it? What the heck? It's still green. Look surprised. Uh, okay. I don't think I'm supposed to keep pressing it. I am so confused. Uh, well... I'm just gonna keep pushing my buttons and hope that I'm doing this right. Bro, they give you so much time. Like, are you kidding me? This is the few times where you can definitely tell Pokemon is a uh, kid's game. <laughs> well, not just for kids. It's E for everyone, right? 
which means literally all ages can play it, but... You know, the gym tests definitely feel more like kid activities than the rest of everything. Nice! You're moving really well! Both you and your Pokémon are looking great! Yeah, definitely wasn't lagging or anything. That's enough of a warm-up. Now let's really put those muscles to work in a battle! Wait, I have to battle you? Oh, never mind. Gotta battle one of the gym trainers. Okay, I'm fine with that. We could use the extra experience too, as she's gonna send out Gotharita, and this will actually give us a better idea of the level that these trainers are gonna be at. Or the gym leader, I guess. Level 43. Not too bad, actually. I mean, our other team members are a little bit over-leveled compared to uh, this girl, at least. But uh, maybe compared to the gym leader, we'll be just fine. As next up, she's sending out... I already forgot, but I know it's something weak to Golden Go, like Steel-type. So, yeah, let's uh, switch it up and send this man out. I love how there's just a crowd of people right there watching, like no reaction or nothing. Look at this man, just stone cold, staring right into the abyss. Like he's not even watching the battle either, he's literally just staring straight ahead. What the heck? <laughs> the Grumpick feels like he's got more emotion than you, dude. That's weird. Okay. I don't know why I have a feeling they were supposed to be a little bit further back, like... I'm gonna need everyone to take two steps back, all right? Clear some space out. I'm feeling a little claustrophobic here, man. Personal space. Great. I can hear your Pokemon and your muscles screaming with delight. I see you're getting tired, but you gotta hang in there. Time to start the second half. Wait, what? There's still more? Oh my god. Okay, I guess. Three, two, one. Rhythm time. This definitely should have been the... Ghost Gym Test, considering it was like a rapper gym leader. They actually had a more of a music theme, I feel. But nope, we have it here instead. Which, I guess? Zumba's a thing, right? Workout with music? That's kind of like the vibe they're going for here. What the heck does it have to do with Psychic Type? Absolutely nothing, except for the weird acronym they came up with. ESP stands for not actually, wait. To be honest, I don't even know what ESP in terms of, like, psychic powers means either. Extra terrestrial space psychic? Oh my god, I pushed the wrong button because I was too busy talking about aliens, which also have nothing to do with psychic. Unless we're talking Elgium, which is actually a psychic type. I don't know, I feel like in the Pokemon world, if there were aliens, maybe they would be psychic type. I mean, there's also Deoxys, who definitely comes from space. Or maybe he's a DNA experiment. I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point, bro. I just want this game to be over. Like, seriously, what the heck am I doing? Covered in sweat and overflowing with emotion. That was impressive. Yeah, whatever you say. Time for another battle. I'm pretty sure they weren't even keeping track of, like, if we messed up the button prompts. I did actually mess up a couple times, and it didn't seem like the game punished us for it at all, or even really changed anything. And it looks like uh, the old man that was just staring into space earlier is battling us, with the little girl now taking his place instead. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? I cannot wait to escape from reality. Please tell me that was your last Pokemon, man. Can't handle this anymore. Not just the rhythm game, but also the trainers. Not really cutting it in terms of uh, challenge here. Good job. You made it all the way through. Oh, thank goodness. You passed this test, no doubt about it. But you're not done yet. Sprint over to the lobby, safer. The staffer? Oh, yeah, of course, the gym employee person. We did it! We're now emotionally stable! Yay! Seriously, that has got to be the weirdest gym challenge yet. It doesn't really help that it's the complete opposite of what you'd expect from a psychic gym. Like, there were so many more concepts they could have done. Like a psychic reading, maybe a little tarot card game, or perhaps that was a little too spooky for the kids. 
I mean, this gym leader apparently is a witch, so like, I feel something to do with psychic reading would have made a lot more sense. Even a memory game with like, tarot cards. I suppose you're right. Okay, I'll get things moving here on my end. Oh, hello. And let's keep the tagline simple. Naturally beautiful. Talking about yourself, cuz, yeah. And order the new eyeshadow color too, would ya? Bruh, <laughs> are those her bodyguards? Oh, that is amazing if it is. Damn, okay, Tulip, wait, what the frick? Why are those flowers moving? Thanks, doll, gotta run now, chat with you later. Is that her psychic powers making those little wings move on their own? Hello there. Oh, uh, hey, I'm Tulip, the gym leader here. Though I must tell you that being a makeup artist is my main line of work. Oh really? Dundra had nothing but praise for you. She said you totally slayed out there. <laughs> I must say, you are a cute challenger. Uh, excuse me? Ma'am? I know I'm not supposed to ask, but... How old are you exactly? Cause, you know, my character in the game isn't quite of age, but... I am, so... What do you say? Dinner and a movie? I'm sure my ESP exercise made you all the more beautiful. Doesn't that make you happy? You keep your Pokemon beautiful and clean as well. I see you have quite the aesthetic sense. Appearance is equally important for both people and Pokemon. <laughs> Makeup is like magic. Anyone can use it to change their appearance. Allow me to put my skills to use to make your cute little Pokemon even more beautiful. <laughs> okay. Suddenly she looks kind of creepy. I don't know if it's the eyeshadow or the liner, whatever the heck it's called, but she is going to kick things off with a Fritcher Wrap. All right. I've been waiting to see this Pokemon. You're quite a good base to test my makeup magic on. What shall I use on you? Anything but eyeliner, please. I tried that once on stream and it did not go well. Wait, what the frick? Are you kidding me? We can't use our first impression? Oh my god. I forgot, that's actually a priority move. And Farigiraf's ability denies the use of priority moves. So, wow, totally countered my strategy. Except he died a, a throat chop anyway. So, uh, yeah, I guess we didn't really need our first impression after all. As next up, she's going to be sending out Gardevoir. And this is the last gym battle, so I'll make sure to remember my little challenge thing that is to not switch out in between her Pokemon so we're keeping in kiddo even though this is a psychic and a fairy type and yep I was definitely expecting a fairy move to come out eventually maybe I should have switched kiddo out but honestly you did your job buddy took the Gardevoir down to less than half HP already so now Dubloon can come in and finish the job with a flash cannon and we're even faster too let's go absolutely destroyed I haven't actually looked at what her levels are yet by the way like I brought along Nobunaga and Vegeta thinking it was gonna be mid 50s but it might actually be mid 40s cuz so far so good we're learning power gem which I guess I could have actually gotten instead of the recover I never use recover honestly and I also have the leftovers held item to kind of deny the damage that we would take with Steel Beam. Which speaking of, well, I could have gone for Steel Beam, but Shadow Ball is super effective. So let's Terrastalize and get it over with as Golden Go shatters and becomes the little ghosty balloon you always dreamed of. Another reference to Gen 1, actually. We have those sprites outside of the gym stadium, but then also Golden Go, that like big old ghost on his head is like the sprite for ghost in the lavender tower i think it was or the pokemon tower in lavender town that was the sprite that like the ghost would use before you had the silk scope so pretty cool the little gen 1 references we got here and there as espathra tried her best to hit us with a super effective move and actually did but wasn't enough you're just as hard to get rid of as caked on mascara i see I wouldn't know anything about that, honestly. I mean, I did wear makeup once, like I said, for a stream, but that's about all the experience I've ever gotten with makeup. Come here, little Florgus. It's time for a makeover. You'll become a new you. Okay, I totally messed up, didn't I? Because <laughs> I already picked Steel Beam, which would have been super effective against Florgus, but 
This Florgus is a little special as it's opened its third eye and become a psychic type. Which means that Steel Beam is not going to be super effective, but I feel like it might still one-shot it. Okay, never mind. I forgot that Florgus actually has a very, very good special defense. So with a Moon Blast, it's going to knock us out and shatter the Terrastalize. Oh no! This is fine. Right, guys? We still got two more Pokemon that are actually a lot higher level than she is. So you know what? Let's try out something a little bit different. Quixote, how about you earn your stripes on the squad? You're already at level 50, which is still five levels above this gym leader. Yeah, we were a little bit... Oh, God, this is just going to one-shot us, isn't it? Okay. Why the heck did I think that maybe Quixote would do something? All right, you know what? I feel kind of bad because we're, like, so much higher level than she is. But Nobunaga is an absolute badass, so let's go for it. Kow Dao Cleave! Oh god, we're still slower, but we're half steel type, so thankfully uh, that's not super effective. And we finally finish it! The Lorgas is done! The final gym is done! The gym challenge is done! And most important of all, Tulip is done! Which means you're free now. You can come over to my dorm room, right? Your strength has a magic to it that cannot be washed away. So she's just not even going to use a Medicham? Okay. Maybe they really were just her bodyguards. I lost the battle, and your beauty rivals even my own? I can't believe it! You are quite splendid. Yes, truly amazing. Perhaps I should take you under my wing before you make your big break somewhere else. But I suppose I need to work on myself a little more before I run off and do such a thing. I mean, I don't mind if you just kidnap me real quick. You've earned my gym badge. Allow me to strike one of my best poses to give it to you. Congratulations. Ooh. She's gonna strike a pose? Okay. Uh, not exactly the kind of pose I was thinking of, but I'll take it. Is it just me or does she kind of remind me of Ariana Grande? I didn't really make the link until right now, but yeah, there's kind of a weird resemblance. If you train hard, you'll be able to use this move in a totally perfect way, too. And we get Psychic! About dang time. Don't go uploading that selfie we just took to social media, okay? Wait, what the heck? Why not? I need that clout. How else am I gonna flex on Skeet? I think my makeup is running a little with all the moving and sweating I did during our battle. I need to fix it fast before my next appointment. My schedule is absolutely packed, you know? Farewell, then. You did splendid today! Dang. Too busy? For a date? Fine. I'll see you in my dreams then, Tulip. Oh no, please! Orange! Lokix! You did it! I'm so happy for you! This is the best! I know I said I wasn't worried, but my heart was still pounding the whole time! Yeah, honestly, I started pounding a little bit when I saw Tulip. Most impressive. A shining display of talent, I must admit. Seriously, pat yourself on the back. You beat every single gym. Which means... Indeed. Now that you've gathered eight gym badges, all that's left is to take on the Pokemon League. If you hope to stand alongside Nimona as a fellow champion, head to the Pokemon League. That is where you can take on the champion assessment. Yeah. We actually went there a very, very long time ago. Like, maybe the fourth episode? Hurry up and get to my rank. I'm itching for a battle of equals. I've got to take the time while facing the Pokemon League to fine-tune my Pokemon's moves and revamp all my tactics. Well, good luck, Orange, and wish me luck, too! Good luck? It's unusual for me to see her so excited, though perhaps not for you. She must really be happy that she finally has a friend who can keep pace with her own talents. There's a special kind of strength that can only be reached by competing with a good rival. Count me among those eager to see how far you two can go. In any case, I'll be waiting for you at the Pokemon League, northwest of Mezegoza. Alright, we got the champion's endorsement to take the champion assessment. The final challenge is literally right there above our head. Challenge the Pokemon League. Dude, I can't believe we finally made it. Like, I don't know, part of me still can't really process that... We're really in the end game. We've got all eight badges. All 18 badges, technically, because in this game, there's more than just the gym challenge, which 
We can actually check out in the map. I didn't realize until now, but if you hover over each of these little challenge bubbles, you can actually get a better look at the badges. Oh, actually, you can go up and down and scroll through them in the order that you beat them, which is pretty cool. Take a little trip down memory lane, all the way down to Cortondo, the very first gym that we battled. And now all that remains is the Pokemon League. Well, technically, there's still also the other two stories to finish. So next episode, I'm going to leave it a mystery, which means you guys will have to stay tuned to find out exactly what we're taking on next. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you all in the next episode.